let's take an ideal gas and put it into a box. Now I could have put the ideal gas into a different box. There are differences between these two gases' conditions. So the physical condition over here, we could describe it using how much there is, the pressure of the gas, the volume, and the temperature of the gas. Over here, those values could be different. Maybe we have 4 moles compared to 2 moles, or maybe the temperature is 500 Kelvin compared to 600 Kelvin. The point is that these four qualities or variables describe the physical condition of the gas. We call that the gas's state, and thus these quantities or variables are state variables. Even though the numbers can change, maybe this is a volume of 400 milliliters and this is 900 milliliters, even though the numbers change, these variables are always related by the same equation. You may know it as the ideal gas law, but we're going to call it the equation of state because it contains the things which describe the state of the gas. This letter R is called the ideal gas constant, and it's provided in our data booklet. If we start on the first page of the data booklet, pretty soon we'll find some fundamental constants. We can zoom in, and right here, the fourth one down, is the gas constant, R. The units are joules, Kelvin to the negative one, moles to the negative one. So let's take a scenario where we have some ideal gas inside this chamber. Now I can take this piston and slide it up and down to compress or expand the gas. I'm going to slide the piston down and compress the gas. The gas started with this greater volume and it ended with the smaller volume. And other things could change too. For example, maybe the pressure or the temperature changed. But one thing we know didn't change is the number of moles. Pressure, volume, temperature, those could all change, but gas did not leak out or into the system. So N1 and N2 are equal. If we take the ideal gas law, we could isolate N because it's the same. Dividing by RT gives us this equation. Mathematically, we can then plug in for N1 and plug in for N2 using this expression. On the left side, I'm just going to add a subscript 1, and on the right side, I just add the subscript 2. Now, the ideal gas constant is exactly that. It is a constant. It never changes. We can cancel it out from both sides. This is what we're left with. There's all sorts of manipulating. Maybe the temperature is what's constant, and so we start with T1 equals T2. Or maybe the pressure remains constant, we start with P1 equals P2. We'll see lots of problems involving that type of analysis. It's really important to stop here and think. This letter T, is that the Celsius temperature or the absolute temperature in Kelvins? If you're not sure, usually the answer is going to be absolute temperature. But you may wonder, why does it matter? Can't we plug in with degrees Celsius, plug in with degrees Celsius, and cancel the degrees? The answer is no. If you take 4 over 8, well sure, that equals 2 fourths. But if we were to add 1 to the denominator of both sides, then this is no longer equal. 4 ninths is not the same as 2 fifths. And in the same way, when you convert from Kelvin to Celsius, it's like you're subtracting 273 from both sides. And for the same reason down here, you do not preserve the equality. So when we use the ideal gas law, we always have to use Kelvin for the temperature. We cannot use Celsius.